planes over here. Listen, your resident super genius built some kind of experimental machine that's drawing the acrid here and agitating it more than usual. Why would Kovacs build something to cause this? You're asking the wrong scientist. See the quarantine room in the center of the lab? Right through the blast there? You blast your way in and put a stop to this mess. You keep them off your tail. guys. Sorry for the inconvenience. Hope saving your life didn't put you out. Oh no, I forgive you. I know carnage and mayhem is part of your nature, and without it, you just wouldn't be you. Or nearly as useful to me. You made a device that can drive the acrid crazy. Well, I would need to run more experiments to know for sure. Establishing a baseline of sanity for these creatures might be prohibitive of itself. Nevertheless, I'm glad the base was able to witness my breakthrough. What, you telling me you did this on purpose? No, not at all. But the experiment is still a resounding success. The acrid were influenced. Don't you see? I figured out how they communicate and I've replicated it. In the course of dissecting many varieties of acrid, I found a receptor that they all had in common. You might understand it as sort of a biological radio receiver, but you'd be stupid because it's vastly more complicated than that. T-energy is an unusual element with uniquely resonant electromagnetic properties. It's, it's more than blood and energy. It's how the acrid coordinate with each other. 
It seems I found a vibration frequency that puts them in an agitated state, which is of limited use itself, but just imagine what else we might be able to do with this. If I can, if I can find the wavelength that would calm the acrid and render them docile, then harvesting tea energy in the quantities we require would be a matter of simple logistics, such as designing a sufficiently massive slaughterhouse. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you in there. It's okay. I actually think better in confined spaces. Auxiliary power systems at 30%. James, a moment. Listen, I don't want to cause a general panic or anything, but just glancing at Coronas while heading in, she's in bad shape. The way the storms are increasing in intensity, I'm concerned it's only a matter of time until the structural integrity is compromised. I don't know, Doc. Seems like a pretty good reason to panic. You got any suggestions? I may. There are some tests I'd like to run, but I'd need your help. Wait for my call and we'll chat properly. In the meantime, I'm sure Braddock wants to catch up with you. They've stopped. The acrid are retreating. Looks like Delta Station's in the clear. The swarm is subsiding in the hangar as well. Whatever you did seemed to work, Jim. We're ever thankful. I'm happy to help. Just glad to be back home. Science is not an exact science. At its best, science is, is chaotic and unpredictable. Often produces a foul odor that you cannot scrub from your fingers. Nature has bottomless mysteries and, and contradictions, and fanfare of ironies and impossibilities. Male seahorses bearing litters. Mm. Frogs consuming their own offspring. Entire population infused with its planet's lifeblood. I've observed these things with my own eyes. I've carved the verities of truth from them with my bare hands. Any answer, and I, I do mean any answer, can be dissected into being. Any secret can be cut open. When the scalpel is sharp enough. This is science, right? 80% uh, patience and 20% is cutting things open. <laughs> Until next time, Mother. Hey, boss. Nice to see everything still running as smooth as ever. I knew you're still alive. <laughs> so where the hell you been? 
So, you fought a G-Class Acrid, fell down the side of a mountain, landed on the other side of Shaq's Peak, and somehow survived for two weeks before you got back into Comrade? Thankfully, the rig was flush with rations and ammo. Lucky timing, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if you've got a good luck charm or you are one. <laughs> Funny how often luck feels just like getting my ass kicked. <laughs> <sighs> Jim, you know, I... Uh... Take you at your word, of course, but uh, I'm sensing there's a little more to your story. Well, now that you mention it, there is this. What is that? Where did you find that? I'm sensing that you already know the answer to that. Don't toy with me, Peyton. What did you find? Why don't you tell me what I found? We're the first humans to set foot on this planet, so obviously I didn't find some 50 year old Nevek base, did I? Did you keep your voice down. Is that really all you have to say? No. It's important you understand something, Jim. Keeping the first colony under wraps wasn't my idea. It's one of the terms I had to agree to for Nevik to green light this mission in the first place. Perception is vital to their interests. I go to great lengths to conceal such a debacle. Coronas was set to land far, far from the original site, but the storm forced us down here. Nearer to the truth than I could have even ever hoped. Hoped? Why would you hope for this? That's why. General Charles Braddock, commander of the first Neo Venus Colonial Expeditionary Force. Your old man led the first colony. Led it and lost it. And he was never the same. Something happened here. Something you would never talk about. Right. So, you're here to what? Fulfill your father's dreams? Redeem his failures? I'm here to solve the energy crisis. And maybe get some answers with your help. Consider this an opportunity. A standing contract for further investigation. Not for Coronas, but for me personally. And I'll pay a premium for your ongoing discretion. So I get to lie to everybody, too? If a word of this reaches Nevek, they'll take back the whole operation. Put it under paramilitary command. I hate lying to the men, Jim, but... It's for their own good. Trust me. I'll see what I can see. By the way, Jim, a supply drop came in while you were away, and if I'm not mistaken, we got all the parts we need for a couple of major upgrades to your rig. One of them's a gas torch. I've got some contracts for you on the new pipeline, so uh, I need you ready to do some welding. The other upgrade? Well, I'll just let Gail show you that one. Man alive! Jim, I'm glad you're back. It was a long couple of weeks. Of course I told him you'd make it. Never a doubt in my mind. Oh, won't Braddock be happy? His favorite, back from the dead. LaRoche is happy to see you too. Hey, major, major upgrade time for you. Parts came in for an acetylene torch? Sexy, right? I can slap that together in no time. But the other upgrade... It's gonna take significant surgery, but you're gonna love it. Consider it a little welcome home gift from Braddock and yours truly. Your chassis is a Dynasty II swing arm. Platform compatible. All the access holes line up and everything if we want to fully convert. You game? I trust you, Gail. And if you hurt her, I'll cut your arms off. Sweet! This is it, Jim. My masterpiece. Your rig can now transform into a drilling platform. The suspension might feel a little tighter, and sorry about that, but you're gonna lose your mind when you see what your rig can do now. 
The Roche, no begging for one. Giving you enough chances. Fancy but useless, huh? What good is a drilling platform without knowing the location of deep thermal pockets? Shush! You're ruining the high. Jim, you were also officially upgraded with the Mitchell Industries oxyacetylene torch. Dual 150 oxygen regulators with a custom thermodyne cutting tip. It's a small flame for welding and cutting, so don't expect to melt the environment with it. It's pretty pyro-proof. Gotta say, proud of this one. Just check the valve reseals on the cylinder from time to time. And the Frankenstein rig keeps growing. Mmm, yeah. LaRoche, can I have a second alone with Gail? Da. Ah, I don't want to be here for this anyway. Au revoir. Listen, Gail, can you look at getting a replacement for this purifier? Uh, dude, this is like 50 years old. I don't think a modern day replacement would work with wherever this came from. But I can look at repairing it for you. Busting out the welding goggles. Tell the truth, Jim. How did you survive in the wild for two weeks? Oh, well, no big story to tell. Fell off a cliff, nearly died, got rescued by a beautiful snow princess who magically healed me at her secret hideaway. Pretty much what you'd expect. Nice. Points for creativity. I'll get the real story out of you when I get the purifier repaired. Now you can collect tea energy without getting out of your rig. Till next time, boss. You looking for something specific? Nice. She'll pack a bigger punch now. Though the trade-off's a touch more recoil. It's well worth it in my humble opinion. See there? That's the stuff. Great for sniping targets. You can never carry enough grenades if you ask me. Thanks, Jim. You keep fighting a good fight. Welcome back. Come back any time, eh? Hey, what's the rumpus, Jim? Good deal, good deal. You be careful out there, kiddo. Now that your rig's upgraded, test it out on a deep core T energy reservoir in the North Plains. Braddock out.
Gracie, I'm so sorry I worried you. I'm fine. I just found myself off the grid for a spell. Nothing I planned on. It's a long story. And you'll hear it, I promise. Just stay strong, doll. Talk soon. Looking like a fine place for a deep core reservoir. Gail uh, Holden, what have you done? Crazy, crazy person. Bananas. Gail, do you copy? Jim, let me guess. You just put Gertie into platform mode, didn't you? Is that not insane? You've outdone yourself this time, no doubt about it. Here's how it works. Once you start the drill, you'll have a limited amount of time before thermal pressure collapses the pocket. So keep the rig functioning at all times to get every last drop of tea energy. The rig won't self-repair while platform, so you'll have to make repairs by hand. Wait, why will I need to make repairs? Uh, about that. See, the deep core drilling causes intense vibration, so you'll likely attract, oh, every acrid in the area. Probably should have mentioned that earlier. Whoops, have fun, gotta go!
Payton. When I first got this job, it was a dream come true. I thought of Braddock as one of my closest friends. I believed him when he called Coronis a family. I looked past the fact that deep down, I didn't fit in there. In retrospect, I never was one of them. Even when I worked, Slept, ate under their roof, I was made to feel like a stranger. I realize I'm not the easiest person to know. Never mastered the art of small talk or clever conversation. But wouldn't a true family look past that? And yet when the storms rage, each worse than the last. I think of them. I know they're a step closer to doom. And I know I can't let that happen. <sighs> Family's a bitch. and I heard your message come in, and now that I know you're okay, I'm feeling a little bit ridiculous right now. Glad you're back on the grid, whatever that means. I love you. Catch up soon. James, thank heavens you made it in time. There's a storm heading this way within the hour, and I need you to plow right into the center of it. Of course you do. Do I want to know why? I need to attach sensors to your rig's winch, so time is of the essence. I'll explain while you're on your way to the top of Shack's Peak. All right then, get in your rig. I'll fill you in as we go. You should see. 
see coordinates on your HUD based on where I expect the eye of the storm. Get moving. So what's the skinny, Doc, since when are we storm chasers? Since I heard every crewman at Corona's buzzing about the big quest for pure tea energy. While that fool Kenny is playing mad scientist with the acrid, he's utterly failed to see the storm patterns for the clue they are. If Braddock had just bought me some more time with Nevik, I'd have been able to prove there's low impurity tea energy within the storms, and lots of it. If storm is even the right word for them. The storms don't fit any natural weather pattern I've seen. They come and go so quickly, with none of the wind signature you'd expect of an Emperor-class atmospheric disturbance. It's as if they somehow have a trajectory. They do seem to come out of nowhere. No, James. Just the opposite. Oh, Doc, you may be blowing my mind a little here. A perennial danger. But with your help, it's time to stop guessing and start hoarding data. Those custom sensors I installed on your winch are going to run a host of tests to help us figure out precisely what we're dealing with once and for all. With a little luck, we'll find some way to help Corona stay standing in the process. All right. Not like it'll be the craziest thing I do today.